Wood starts. Do you know how he says action? No. He says, when you're ready. All right, when, when we're ready. And I think we're ready. Okay. Allison Porter is here with us. This is a podcast called Still Standing Up, and of all people that have on here, you're the perfect <laughs> candidate because I said to her before we started, I said, you know, this is about the turnaround. She goes, well, I've had quite a few of those. How many times? I'm dizzy. <laughs> how many times? I'm dizzy. You're dizzy from turning around yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. Turning life around is so beautiful, isn't it, though? It I mean, is. To, I do it daily. Well, that's that's good. You do a reset. Right, right when I wake up. A refresh and a reset. <laughs> Every single day you turn something around. Yeah, you have to. Do you have anxiety or something you wake up with and you go, I got to turn this around and you have a method? I don't know if I have anxiety. Well, I mean, I have, who doesn't have some anxiety? <laughs> right, some. right, yeah. No, I have like, uh, what is it? When you catastrophize and when you're, maybe it's anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, say that's a little. I think above. I just have to like every morning. I have to go. Okay, this is we're going to be okay. We're, we're going to figure yeah. this out just just for today. It's funny you just say that. I I, <clears throat> I remember when I first got clean and sober. A guy said to me those words. He actually looked at me, and for the first time, I took it in because a lot of people are going. Ah, you know, they come at you with their business cards or whatever. Right. Right, get away from me. He just said everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And I used that as a mantra for a while. Yeah, is, is, everything's going to be okay. If you just pause, you take that pause. I call it spiritus for breath. Mm -hmm. Take that breath and it's, oh, oh everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Including you being on this show with a perfect stranger. It's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. We're not strangers because we have too many people in common. And we including met. Including some and of our felt, loves. We met randomly at. The rooster. The, the moody, moody rooster. rooster. Yes, with, you were with Carney. I was with Carney It was Wilson. all my game show. Who I, I'm obsessed with. Yeah, she's awesome. And you came over and it was like, yeah, well, how are we not, how do we not hang out all the time? Well, yeah, well, all these things in common. But the biggest thing in common is uh, Michael Orland. Michael Orland and <laughs> One sobriety. of my favorite people. <laughs> one of my favorite people ever. Ever. Well, we didn't know that at the time until today. Right. But uh, I I love this guy. He'll be on our show. He was the um, music director of American Idol, which you're the voice. Yes. Cheating on Michael over at the it's okay. over, over at the voice. Michael's but the greatest. Both both from Worcester. Yeah, we're both from Worcester. And I don't even know how to pronounce it. It you looks do. like Worcester. It's I make fun of it when not. I go there. Yeah. Isn't it? Doesn't no. it look like it should, should yeah. say Worcester? Yeah, it's got the C and it <laughs> confuses people all the time. But of course, Bostonians Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. And I, I just love the way. Yeah, Michael grew up with my mom. Oh my God. I grew up with Michael's younger sister. My grandmother had a dance studio in Worcester that was like very renowned. And Stephanie, Michael's younger sister, went there and I grew up with Michael. You grew up basically in showbiz without being in Hollywood. Worcester's a far cry. No, from I Hollywood. was I was here. I was in Hollywood. Oh, you were? From five yeah, from when I was five until I was like thirteen. And then I kind of Bounced to Westport, Connecticut for high school, and then I came right back. Yeah. Okay. So Worcester was just the first five years or so, but yeah. are, are your parents are also kind of showbiz. Or... Yeah. My mom was a Broadway chick and a choreographer and a dancer. Oh, my God. My dad is a rocker. He's like 70. <laughs> how old am I? He's 72. He's a rocker. 73, 72, making a record. No. Yeah, he is. And my stepdad, who raised me since I was five, is Don Weiner. So he created Showtime at the Apollo and, uh, you know, directed So You Think You Can Dance. And... What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have some pedigree going on here. Yeah, like a little Nepo, but not really. A little, yeah, no, no, really. <laughs> I'm Nepish. <laughs> you're you're Nep adjacent. Yes. So, uh, wow, that is a... That's a, my dad is a cult leader running mule rides. Is he really? That's where I come from. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. no, I love cults. I think they're no, awesome. You do? Yeah. I'm like so bummed that I never got into a cult. You, in like my 20s? You Ugh, have no idea out. how I'm shaking right now with what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> my wife it. left our marriage, great marriage, for a cult leader. Not really. I swear. Okay, I'm sorry. I take and it back. not only that, I'm watching, I bet you watch a lot of documentaries on cults. Yeah. Right? I'm watching one. No. And you're going to know which one it is. And no. I look, it's my friend's sister. No. Who killed her kids. No, no. You know that one? No, I don't. I'm, you don't know that I'm one? I'm not that into cults. I'm not like different research. <laughs> well, you have a line. If anybody's killed, you're out. I Yeah, the death ones are, are scary. They're all but, like, death the, ones, but, aren't they? I don't know. But like, there's some that Jim just Jones. Are, are so like the, what was the one with the, with the. Oh, 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 I know the. the where they all wore the maroon clothes. I was very into that look. Oh. I would have liked to have been in that cult for the fashion alone. What was it called? It, we were all so Osho not, or whatever not that Hale guy. Bob or whatever. The Osho guy. I uh, liked him. There was a bunch of them, though, that, uh, that 
Wild Wild Country. Yeah, Wild Wild Country. That's it. I lo- oh, that's the one yeah. you're talking about. Didn't I- you want to be in that a little? Well, because they had their own town. I kind of like that they had their own town. I like that, that too. was that was pretty charming. Nice they had charming their, they town. had the look. You had to be in like an earth tone fall <laughs> color. <laughs> Rolls in- Royces. Very into although they're all his. Yeah. My friend whose sister, very famous story actually. And I'm watching this. And I just saw him this week, and uh, that's why he's so funny. He comes backstage, and he's with his gigantic roommate. And he's been his roommate, and he never knew that, that this had, had happened. He goes, "Wait a minute, I'm scared now," <laughs> because because it was crazy. oh, it was really cray cray. Yeah, I, it would take a lot for me to. I I, I love. My, I'm like obsessed with my kids. I don't it's, think anybody could coerce me to kill my children. R- um, obviously, I don't think so. I was just talking to Dennis about this. <laughs> I never even hit my children. No. Well, oh God, I'll get like canceled for this. One time. <laughs> Don't worry. It's a really funny story, though. One yeah. time I may or may not have like given someone a bop, my son. <laughs> and then my daughter's like walking down the hallway and Mason goes to Aria and he's like, Aria, run, you're next. <laughs> and I never have. No, I mean, I think there is like sometimes there's this instinctual like, oh, I'm gonna, oh like, I don't know how else to get through to you. But I, they're, they're, I'm not down with the, the hitting. They're all different. My, yeah, my, the, they are. The, the first two I had with a different wife, uh, I I hit one a number of times, but not a lot, you know, but probably a total of five. And one I hit once because I wanted to sh- I wanted to show him, <laughs> like, this is what you're in for if you continue. Like, yeah. I do have the power here because they, they test your power. Yes, they do. Especially they you, they must, because they're like, you're their height. <laughs> I am. It's, there's barely a distinction between me and the kids. Most of the time, people think I'm the babysitter. I have a question I'm wondering if anyone's ever asked you this. Oh, my gosh. Okay. The, okay. Your, the spelling of your name. Yeah. Okay. It's so not um, of the time we're in now, of 2024. The reason why I'm spelled A-L-I-S-A-N. Okay, yeah. It's like so, like. It's going to get poo-pooed. My, Someone has sorry, asked Mom. you this before. Well, I didn't know, so I asked, oh, what the no. hell is this about? Right. You know, why do I have to, you know, right, even right. people today, Alison, no, no, no. So my mother didn't want to put son at the end of her daughter's name. Well, she could have gone with a different Sally. Sin, <laughs> or that. <laughs> or just another but name. She loved the name. and then She I, loved the name Alison, and but she, didn't want to have son at the end. Correct. And she loved Japanese culture. She's actually married to a guy who's half Japanese. She has been for 37 years. Oh, my kids are Japanese, part Japanese. So and, and, we have yes, t- there's an S-A-N. So, right. Yes. So it's Ali San. Mika-san. But yeah. really, it's Allison. Interesting. But okay. Yeah, but that's why. And you never thought of changing it? No. Out of convenience? No, it's cool. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's different. I always liked being a little bit unique and a little different. Of course. And never, look at the business termi- you're in. Terminal uniqueness, you <laughs> yes, know? So. Yes, Good, good alcoholic that I am. It is important. It is important to be unique. I, when I coach, I actually one of the steps that I have it's um, is you for unique. I said, "What makes you unique?" Yeah, there you and go. And that's what stands out. Like I will never forget on our coaching call, someone she cut. She's from Australia. She cuts the head off of snakes. I will never forget. <laughs> see what Whoa. she did to you, even right? Like for fun? You, that, that's what they do over there. So we will never forget that. Another guy, Sean. He, Scuba dive, he's a scuba diving with sharks, not in a cage. He swims with the sharks. On purpose. Rub up against his mask. So I don't think I would ever do that. Of course you wouldn't. That's what makes you, you know, well, that's what makes them I'm unique. I'm just spelled with an A. At, no, at you have end. a ton of uniqueness. <laughs> I mean, you starred in a movie at a very early age with Curly Sue. Yeah. And how old were you? Nine. What happened to the curls, by the way? It was a perm. It's the sh- no it's way. the show business. They, they did not. They yeah. permed you? Yes. I had straight hair. My mother curled my hair with those old 80s. For the audition? Styrofoam rollers and, or whatever they were. Those pink ones. Yeah. Like the pageant kids. <laughs> So yeah. wait a minute, you, she did that for the audition? Yeah. Because they wanted the name Curly, Curly Sue. Sue. You had to be Curly. Yeah. So, you, oh my God, all this time. I, I feel sorry. like I'm, I feel like I'm with a phony here. No, 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 my <laughs> hair's pretty straight. Where's that Curly? Yeah, it is It's a little straight. bit curlier now, you know, puberty hit and stuff. But no, was, I had like pin straight hair. What did that do for you? <clears throat> a, that's, you're the, literally the starring role yeah. of a feature film, a, the studio picture, wasn't some little indie. Well, I had done, you know, it was my fourth movie at huh. nine. Wow. And I had worked with Ron Howard, was my first director. What was that? Parenthood. Oh. Original Parenthood. Before right. the television shows. Steve Martin and right. Mary Steenburgen and Jason Robart. I was like my intro to acting, movie, and you were movie one of the acting. Kids. I was one of the kids. But you were the, ki- you were the kid of who? Steve. I was the one who threw up on him. <laughs> 
the no beginning way. of the movie. And then Larry Kazan was my second director. Wow. And then I did one what of the movie. What was that movie? I Love You to Death with Kevin Klein and Tracy Ullman. Sure. River Phoenix. A great movie. Jeez. Really good movie. And then I did another movie that was like not really So you important. don't even start by being an extra. Dennis no. and I, Dennis Haysburg was No, I tier. went right in. I was three to five. I was in like 40 national commercials. Jeez. One star search when I was five and then went right into uh, movies and search. TV. Star search. That was the show. Was to the do. show. That was the so show. So great. With Ed McMahon. Yeah. And uh, a lot of comedians were discovered from that show. Yeah. My old friend Rosie O'Donnell was yeah, discovered. Was. I remember we started together, and I remember she was going out to do Star Search, Love and her. it literally made her career. Yeah. And a, a whole load of comedians, but singers the, as well. One of the judges became my manager. What? She, she didn't vote for me. I didn't win, like, the big finale. I won. I, I got up to that, and then a girl named Tracy Spencer won. But Dolores Robinson I know Dolores. Everybody knows Dolores. And our whole family. Yeah, me too. She was my manager for the rest of my career. Holly Robinson, Pete, and uh-huh. I'm friends with Rodney Pete for a very yeah. long time. And they're I, from Philly, by I the way. I just coached Holly on The Masked Singer. We'll get there. But <sighs> I have vocal coach on The Masked Singer. I'm so upset. You I, spoiled it no, for see, me. No, it's already been on. It's already been on. Yeah, but I haven't seen it. We watched the reruns. Well, I can't <laughs> talk about it until it's, until it's on. So. <laughs> so. We love that show. But at I home. Love, Dolores became my manager, and that's when Curly Sue everything out. happened. Get out! Is she yeah. still your manager? No, but I mean, I, I love her dearly. She's wow. like a second mom to me. Yeah, she's a second mom to a lot of people. Yes. She's yeah. So Curly Sue came when I was nine. Do we have anything else in common? I know. It's, I mean, it, we're... it's kind of like ridiculous, and yet we don't even know each and other. And we're it's neighbors. The first, it's the first time. We're... We also both ended up in Agora of all places, blocks away from each other. <laughs> and I never met school. you in my life. I didn't even know your name was with an A. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's all these all these people in common. It's kind of crazy, and that's another one because Rodney and I go way back, and Holly is as Love well. Holly. And Dolores wanted to manage me too. I should have let her because I would have starred in straight hair, straight hair Craig. You, yeah, you could have been in you could have been in the movie with me. So you were in Curly Sue, and what did it do to your life? I mean, did you have that life of the of the child actor? Yeah. Well, you you got the alcoholism. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm a that child comes, actor comes, and an alcoholic. That comes, that comes with the Literally territory. one for the other. But, but but really, does it? I mean, yeah. when you think about it. Oh yeah, it's a whole thing. What do you think is behind this? Is fascinating to me because I actually know a lot of them. I think it is partially because you get so much so fast. Mm. So like the quick fix starts when you're five. And, right, and they're fixing it for I you. I didn't too. win yeah. Star Search, but Ed McMahon gave me a five foot fucking panda bear to, you know, teddy bear that uh-huh. was like the size of whatever. So it's yeah. like my expectations were gigantic, wow. right out, right of, the out gate. of the gate. Wow. Yeah. So I think it's that. I think it's they kiss you know, your ass. Sure. At, 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 you, as a child, you get a lot. Our kids don't get their asses you get kissed a lot. So that has to do with kind of the mindset. Yeah, you get a lot really early on, and you want more. You want more. You want oh. more jobs. You want more stuff. You want more money. By the time you're nine, I'm like, oh, I made this much money. So in the, for this job, am I going to make this much money? Yeah. And does that mean I can do this and do that? I mean, it's yeah. it, we're more whores. And also, <laughs> there like, was just a more whore. That's what I call yeah. myself. It's it cannot be enough. No, I fed my son, my my nephew years ago, and this is like I try to tell my kids what an alcoholic is because uh-huh. it's very difficult to describe. Sure, but Different. he was like one and a half, and I went and visited him in Philadelphia, and I would feed him with a spoon, and the food was still like in his cheeks, and he would go more. I'm going, mm-hmm. uh oh, this kid's gonna be an alcoholic. Yeah, totally, that's my son. And then I took him in the other in the other room, <laughs> and I would play rocket ship, and I go five, four, three, two, one, and I would throw him up in the air. On the way down, he's going again. That's yeah. us. More again. Yes. Then exactly. the same day, I take him to the swings, and I, I'm, I'm, I always overdo everything. My nickname <laughs> is Shoe. They say Shoe. Why do when you can overdo? I do right. overdo. So I'm, th- I'm going to be the best uncle ever. He's practically going over, the, over the. He's and he kept going higher, yeah. higher, and, yeah. then, and then boom, he lands. He, he fell off. Uh huh. And I went over. And I'm present now, and I was like, oh, "I love you. I'm so sorry." And he's like crying his eyes out. Then he goes again. Yeah, more. <laughs> there it is, more yeah. again and higher. Yeah, more again That's and higher. That's the definition. Yes. Of alcoholism. A hundred percent. More again and higher. You can't have enough. Yeah. And you couldn't have enough even at that age. A hundred percent. First drink was at what age? Probably thirteen. Yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah 12, 13, 13, 12, 13 was 12, 13, like everything yeah. sort of started. And isn't it crazy? I had a, yeah. When you have kids and yeah. you're going, there's no shot that this kid's doing what I did. 
in and, no way. I mean, no I'm looking at my my son's 11, and that's kind of when it started for me. I think I probably smoked a cigarette at 11. Yeah, exactly. Or stole something. Oh yeah. And I'm he's like straight A basketball travel team. <laughs> Please tell me how this happened. Good kid. Like supposed to have the champion go, gene. I barely let him go to 7-Eleven by himself. And I was like at the West Side Pavilion stealing Sanrio. <laughs> like, what? what the hell? Allison, and I had, tell me what it is. They I have... think it's because, okay, so like we're mini adults, right? These little kid actors are like mini adults. Mm-hmm. And so people treat you like you're a mini adult because you act like one. Right. And instead of someone going, ooh, you're acting like a 20 year old when you're nine. This isn't cute. They're not going to stop you. They go, whoa, she's wise beyond her years. Whoa, she's so mature right, for her right, age. Yeah. No. Like, I was playing whatever part I was sure. playing in my brain, which was the part of an adult. Right. And instead of someone going, slow down, sister, they're going, get more jobs, make more money, da 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 You know, and not my parents, by the way. Like, my, I really think my parents had a pretty uh, good understanding of, like, what and they weren't they stage were dealing mom with and dad. no. They, they, I think they, my mom at any time was like, "Whenever you're over this, like we're cool." Right, right. But you were the one encouraging them. I was me the to one audition. driving the part. train for a very you, long time. You were time. driven at a very early age for attention. Yeah. The only thing I think my mom did wrong was I had this, <laughs> I had this set babysitter that, by the way, we all had. We talk about like the Jody Swedens and the Natanya Rosses yeah. and the Marla Sokoloff. We all had this same set sitter who oh. was just. Not a good influence. <laughs> you know, like she taught us how to do everything wrong. I remember that sense. Of... Yeah. She, I mean, she, she was everywhere. She, and it's like, it was like. She did just the 10 of us as well. And not a good, not a good thing. Wow. And so she influenced a lot of that behavior too, <sighs> where, you know, you think that they're just taking you to the set and being there so your parents can raise their other children right, or whatever. Right. But really it was. A little, you know. That's it, interesting. It was groomy. And that, and that was that your first uh, alcohol is hanging out with a set uh, teacher. She was like maybe cigarettes and maybe weed. <laughs> alcohol was dance competition. I did dance competitions in the summer, and I had like some older dance friends, and yeah. I think that it was like that. It and was, you, like, do you remember intro. your first booze? What it was? Oh, it's so disgusting. I won't even talk about it. No, I'm the same thing. I have disgusting as it well. It was more disgusting than yours. All right. I, I, this it is was. Great. Hold on. Hold on. Let's, we thought. Let's, hold on. We're, da, 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 da. we're going to do dueling. Okay. This is it's dueling banjos. This, this is, is a so face gross. Off. We're going to have somebody else judge here. We're going to say what it is. This is so gross. Who do you want to go first? Gianni, who do you want to go first? Gianni's going to be the judge. Okay. The guest goes <laughs> okay. first. All right. So Who, who's the, the contest is whose first booze was more disgusting? Is that the, is that true? Mine's so disgusting. Okay. Yes. All right. I can't so wait for this. So we had gone. I was with a girlfriend who was older. She must have been sixteen because she drove. Okay. We went to You're thirteen. I'm thirteen. We went to like a you know like an Applebee's or something like that. Got like a fried food platter. We go home and we're like, what can we drink? Whatever. She's like, well, let's make like a whiskey and cream like a you know like a creamy whiskey drink so we took actual whiskey and coffee cream and we made whatever we thought we were making which we we weren't making we were making straight whiskey Uh, with a uh, splash of cream okay and let me tell you i remember that vomit i remember it i can feel it it's coming it's here right here right now it's 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 a sense memory that's that's appearing for you right now it was real bad i think i'm gonna win this <laughs> I think, really? I think, yeah i do wow that's pretty bad that's bad it was not yummy i would go to babysitting jobs of other girls uh, not that i'm a girl but i mean of, of girls that i wanted to you know yeah, be yeah, yeah. with uh-huh, uh-huh. you know but they have nothing to do with me i was a total geek uh-huh. and i would go to their babysitting jobs and invade the liquor cabinets yep and some of them i saw that they marked it and i put water in there i was very clever okay 13 years old and I would combine everything, vermouth, any kind. Of, I didn't even know what vermouth was. I didn't know what anything these things were. Anything you Grain, could get, alcohol, no everything in one jar, yep. a mason jar. <laughs> and we, I would close my nose and chug it. It was called weasel piss. Yeah. Boom. I'm going to go weasel piss over whiskey cream. Ew. I think we <laughs> thought we it. were making like Kahlua and cream or something. I don't know what. Oh, all right. Kahlua what. in there. Everything was in this thing. Weasel piss. Ick. Gross. There you go. Do I win? I don't know. It's a tie. I don't know. Who got sicker? I did. 
But they, and, and this will tell you. So then I got so drunk. It was to always. I was always the one who was the most. Too drunk. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And they don't know what to do with you. Mm-hmm. Like the other kids at the babysitting job. What are we going to do with this idiot? Yeah. So they get, they made coffee and they jammed it down my throat. Yeah. But this tells me that I'm an alcoholic. I quit coffee, but not alcohol. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but so I've never had a cup of coffee since. Yeah. Weasel P1. Oh, P1. oh they said in our headphones. Yeah. I didn't know okay, what they were fine. saying. Weasel P1. <laughs> fine. Fine. You shouldn't do that to the guest. It's okay. You should have told her afterwards. But I will say. She like, can't even hang anymore now I, on the no, show. She's I'm, so upset she I'm lost that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. Used, I, I, went, I want plenty. Woo. Was that fun? It was amazing. Uh, uh, Amazing. We're high. By the way, when I, you're right. We're <laughs> high. Well, I'm glad you were with us to see we're not really high. We're high on our breath work and our hang and our vibration. Our vibes. So much about singing is about vibration. Yeah. But more important, so much about life is about vibration. Who you vibrate with, who you resonate with, who you connect with, with that ethereal connection. It was so much fun having a little ethereal divine connection with you today. Allison great. Porter, thank you for being here, and we hope you spread the word. Uh, it's called Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker.